Okay, today I'm working on the Romeo and Juliet box. I am going to use some CB Giddy inspired sound holes and I'm going to cut two of them in the top of the box. I've got it jigged up onto the tabletop here. It's just slid down in. These clamps are kind of tight against the sides, but I'm going to be keeping my hands up on top of it to try to keep it held down. I don't want to try to hold it with any clamps. And let's get going. All right, there it is. I've got the sound holes cut in it. That was a up spiral mill bit and uh, probably not the best kind to use. I'm thinking a down cut bit might have been better for the paper. I'll have to try to file away and sand that paper edge and see what it comes out to look like. And there we go. Look pretty good. So I'm just working on the box sound hole. I colored the inside edge, the cut edge of the box with a Sharpie. Matched well enough, I thought. I'm going to line the inside of the holes here with some aluminum wire that I have. I'm just gonna cut out a couple of pieces here that's big enough to cover those. And I am using a pair of bonsai shears or cutters for this. Works pretty good. I'm eyeballing it out the rough shape here. This will be super glued to the inside of the lid. But before I do that, I believe I'm gonna paint it gold to try to match the gold on the uh, wording here on the box. I've put some low tack tape here on the side of my box and I've drawn in my two center lines where I wanna have the neck of the guitar to come down. And I've used this gauge, which is a impression gauge. It just moves and copies it, the contour of anything. So I use that on the back of the neck to get my contour to try to get the proper radius for the bottom here and then measured down from the bottom of my fretboard bottom of my fretboard down to the base and did it about three different times and double checked it triple checked it make sure that I got it right and this is how deep I need my cut now I'm just going to do this with a couple of different hand saws a coping saw and a little pull saw that I've got I think will be the easiest thing. Now 
Now she's beginning to look like a guitar. Got the neck fitted to the box. One thing I don't like is this surgeon's warning. I think I'm going to use a heat gun, warm that up a little bit, and take that sticker off. I'm just going to use a fret scale ruler, which has marks on it. I'm not sure if the camera will pick those up or not, but there's marks there for where each of the fret markers go. I'm going to mark fret markers on the side and fret markers on the top so that I can drill for those. Measures from the nut, so you need to make sure the nut mark is perfectly aligned and then it gives you the marks for each fret that needs to be marked. Just like so. Okay, I've got a bit of an X marks the spot. Not sure if you can pick it up or not on the side here as well as on the top for each fret marker. I'm going to go through with an awl and punch a little center in that just to ensure that my bit doesn't wander. Should be enough. Okay, I'm set up over on my mill, and I have a little four flute end mill that's just the perfect size for the outside of a rivet that I want to use for my fret markers. And I'm just going to drill a small indention for the head of that rivet to sit flush to the top of the fretboard. So I need a hole centered on the last little hole that I drilled for the top of the rivet. And I've got a rivet turned upside down here. I'm using a bit that fits through the middle of it. And that's helping me center that hole on the little recess. Not perfect, but I think it'll be close enough for what I'm doing. A little bit of play in it. All of this is difficult because I've already radiated the bottom of this. Yeah. Once I get these holes drilled, I'll use that as a pilot hole to drill a 332nd hole, which is big enough for this rivet to fit down in the proper way. All right, I've got all my holes drilled. Some of them are centered, some of them aren't quite so great. I went ahead and drilled it just one size bigger than I usually drill for this. It's gonna give me a little bit of wobble room to be able to center those better. They're gonna get glued in, so I'm not too concerned with it moving around. Just insert them all here. I got the burrs out from underneath them so they're not sitting proud. We'll do a little bit of sanding on this fretboard before I actually fret it. I'm going to have to tap a couple of them over a little. Like that one. A little center punch here that I can kind of seat him down off to the side. Those are the ones that didn't quite get where they needed to be. Okay, I'm gonna fill each of these little brass rivets with some red coral. Got just a little metal spout. 
spatula here to help. I'm trying to do this without getting it in my fret slots. I'm just using an artist brush to clean the dust out of the grain. I'm trying to clean all my excess off. Try not to go directly over where you want it to stay because it'll brush it right out of there right now. I do have a little bit around the outside of that rivet that I don't necessarily want there, but I'm not so sure I'm going to be able to do anything about it. We'll see how it looks when it's done. All right, I'm using Hot Stuff by CA, no, by Satellite City. It's a CA glue, and I have a little uh, applicator put on it that helps me control, I think. So I was gonna fill the side marker slots here with some red coral so it would match the top fret marks, but I didn't think that the red would show up well enough on this dark wood. It's really got a red tint to it. So what I've decided to do instead is to use some copper wire, which should give me a circular, shiny marker that should show up just a little bit better once it's installed. And I'm just taking some 14 gauge wire, which I've drilled 16 inch holes here and tapping that down into the hole gently. I'll go back with a little bit of super glue on that just to make sure that they stay in. Stripping it back and cutting off a short piece and then I'll come back and cut them all off flush and sand it down. Okay, just going through here, giving it a little bit of a haircut. About as flush a pair of plier cutters as I have. And I will come back with probably a small file to flatten that a little bit and then do some finished sanding with sandpaper. All right, I'm using my radius block and some 150 grit sandpaper here just to try to take off the extra glue. Careful I don't sand completely through that top edge of those rivets. Hopefully they're just below the surface enough where it's just gonna leave a nice shiny brass ring is kind of what I'm looking for. I also need to make sure I'm making pretty full strokes here so that I don't have a low spot in the fretboard. Let me take a scraper and scrape some of those areas to try to eliminate some of that glue. I'm going back through now and adding another application of CA glue. This is a medium thickness. And I, what I, I've sanded down to 320 and I have it pretty much looking like I want it to look, but there's a few little voids where it's not flush to the surface. So this thick glue will fill those voids with a clear. It'll also protect that brass from oxidizing. I'm going to inlay the red coral in my logo here on the headstock. I'm going to pretty much do the same thing. Put a good amount of the powder on, spread it out, brush it down, and then coat it with CA. And sand it back. Here's a shot of the fretboard. It is sanded down to 1000 grit. Got a nice bit of shine and that is with no finish so far.